Hello and welcome to Dental Materials, Chapter 13, Abrasion, Finishing and Polishing. Here are your objectives for this portion of the unit. You may stop the lecture to read through those objectives on your own. And here is another page of objectives. Some terms we're going to be looking at today, um, starting out our contouring, polishing, cleansing, abrasive, and hardness. So here we go with finishing is the use of hard and coarse abrasives that are used primarily to remove any gross surface irregularities and to produce the final contour of a restoration. Polishing is the process of abrading the surface of a restoration with a series of particles causing scratches um, going from a coarse abrasive particle to a fine particle to produce a smooth surface that's uh, smooth enough to be aesthetically pleasing, well tolerated by soft tissues, and resistant to biofilm adhesion. That means plaque buildup. The purpose of polishing is to remove soft deposits and to polish stains without damage to hard tissues. Cleaning is where we generally have a soft material with small particle sizes that are intended to remove softer materials that adhere to enamel or restorative material substances. So think of the grits in trophy paste. So they can go from extra fine all the way up to extra coarse. And abrasive is the material composed of particles of sufficient hardness and sharpness to cut or to scratch a softer material when it's drawn across its surface. So this we can think of using an abrasive cleaner like Comet or Soft Scrub, uh, something like sandpaper that is used to smooth wood. This is kind of what we're doing with these abrasive particles in dentistry as well. The hardness of a material is its ability to resist abrasion. So remember that porcelain is harder than enamel. That's why we try to not put porcelain against a normal natural tooth structure. Rouge is harder than acrylic and tin oxide is harder than gold. Abrasive tools that are used in dentistry, we have sandpaper discs and strips. We can use diamond burrs, acrylic burrs, finishing burrs, stone wheels, green and brown stone burrs, as well as separating discs. Here are examples of all of those things. So we have a sandpaper disc that is going between the interproximal contacts to smooth and shape and contour those contacts. We have a sandpaper strip that's used to do that gross uh, finishing and then fine polishing of the interproximal. Here are just some different shapes and sizes of diamond burrs. Here is a look at some acrylic burrs that are used to trim dentures and retainers. Here are some plain finishing burrs that are used to um, do that initial smoothing of the composite. This is a look at a stone wheel. These come in many different shapes and sizes. This one happens to be um, a black wheel. They can be brown, they can be blue, depending on the coarseness of the material and the content of the material is going to be determined by what color these are. They can also be a pink color as well. Here are some examples of green stones. Um, they can also be brown, depending again on what needs to be polished, is going to be determined the use for these um, instruments. And then lastly, we have the separating discs. And uh, I believe you used these on some of your Dell Materials projects that you have had created. So um, you can use those in so sweet hand pieces as well. Factors that affect abrasion is the rate of the, the abrasion is determined by the size of the particles and the ir irregularity and hardness of the particles. An abrasive action is a cutting action. So when you are abrading something, you're actually cutting a scratch in it. The larger the particles, the deeper the cut or scratch and the greater the amount of surface removed. So something that is a coarse grit is going to leave a deeper uh, scratch or cut in the surface. The finer the grit, the shallower the cut and scratch is going to be in the surface. An abrasive leaves the surface with irregular grooves, and the width and the depth of those grooves correspond to the size and the grit 
um, of the particle of the abrasive that is used. Particles that are large and irregular will cut um, more efficiently. If the surface being abraded is harder than the abrasive, there is little to no effect. Abrasive particles are classified from coarse to fine based on their size measured in micrometers. The more concentrated the particles that contact the surface, the more quickly the surface will be abraded. And some doctors will use water and or saliva to be used as lubricants to, to dilute that abrasive, which also keeps burrs from clogging or filling with debris. And if we look at that top bullet, if the surface being abraded is harder than the abrasive, there's little to no effect. So it would be like taking a, another piece of porcelain and rubbing it against porcelain. It's not going to do anything because they're the same hardness. If we take a denture that is acrylic and we um, rub that with a diamond, that's going to float through that like hot butter. So you need to use something that is appropriate um, extra hardness for those different materials so that we're not damaging them when we're actually trying to finish and polish them. Um, factors that affect abrasion are pressure and speed. The greater the pressure placed upon the tooth by the abrasive, the greater the rate of structure that's going to be removed. So increasing the speed and the pressure of an abrasive will increase the rate of abra abrasion. Uh, speed can also produce undesired effects if it results in lack of control. So if you are polishing a denture and you are using a rag wheel and you're not holding the denture correctly, that denture can uh, spin out of your hand and fly into the lab pan where the pumice is being held and fracture it and be even more of a mess than what it was when you started. Um, another part of the story is if you are using a handpiece with an acrylic burr on a custom tray or a temporary crown or something that you need to trim and you're not using your fulcrum and you have the handpiece going too quickly, um, it can also either spin it out of your hand and be lost, it can spin it, um, the burr into the material too quickly and ruin what you're working on. So make sure you're keeping that in mind. Increased pressure will cause deeper scratches into the material and speed and pressure also produce frictional heat, may, which may, may affect the tooth structure and patient comfort if we're using those abrasives intraorally. Um, quality of abrasives should possess a sharp edge. They should be harder than the surface that is needing to be altered, and they should also not be so brittle as to shatter when it strikes the surface to be abraded. So they need to be hard enough, but not brittle. Other factors affecting abrasion is the rate of abrasion is determined by the abrasive being used and the surface being abraded, which is called the substrate. If the substrate is harder than the abrasive, there is going to be no abrasion that is done. If the substrate is too soft for the abrasive being used, a lot of damage is going to be done to that item. Abrasive's characteristics include size, irregularity, and the hardness of the particles, as well as the number of particles that contact the surface and the pressure and speed at which they are applied. So again, going back to sandpaper, sandpaper is classified as to how many particles, how many pieces of grit are on a square inch of that paper. So the smaller the number, the finer the sandpaper is going to be, the, the more shallow the scratches are going to be on the substrate. And then we have classification of particles. So modes of delivery for these abrasives, um, the dental abrasives are supplied in a number of forms. They can be paste abrasive, loose abrasives, bonded abrasives, coated abrasives, and microparticle abrasives which are delivered by air pressure. In the photograph that you see, there are some tubes and containers of a paste that would be placed on one of the other materials that are alongside of those. These can have these paste on there to give an extra little sheen. We have our sandpaper strip, our disc, and then these little pop-on um, um, finishers as well. 
Paste abrasives come in a form of a slurry. Think of your toothpaste or dentifrice um, are all examples of paste abrasives. The loose abrasives are manufactured in powders and paste and are classified by their grit and particle size. They can be coarse, medium, fine, and super fine. So when we go from the coarse, those are their largest particles and super fine are the smallest. These can be applied with wheels, brushes, cups, or soft pads onto the substrate. Bonded abrasives are attached to a rotary instrument like a point, disc, cup, or wheel. These abrasive particles are uniformly dispersed in a binder and are then bonded to that particular device. These are frequently used for intermediate finishing and initial polishing of restorations. Coated abrasives are supplied on rotary discs and handheld finishing strips. So these are the example of those soft flex discs that doctors use to begin polishing a composite and those sandpaper strips that went interproximally. Certain metals are also used in abrasion. We have diamonds, we have tungsten carbide finishing burrs, silicone carbides, aluminum oxide, um, which are kind of like emery's or sandpaper. We can use sand itself, and silicone dioxide, pumice, rouge, tin oxide, calcium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, um, silicone dioxide, and potassium and sodium. So when we look at calcium carbonate, that is chalk, and sodium bicarbonate is actually baking soda. Preparations used for abrasion. So we have profi paste is a mixture of pumice, tin oxide, and also lubricants. It contains a mixture of 50% to 60% abrasive materials. Profi paste may be 20 times more abrasive to dentin and 10 times more abrasive to enamel than a commercially prepared dentifrice, which is, remember, a toothpaste. So that is pretty abrasive, which is why when we were practicing in principles, you were only allowed to use toothpaste or extra fine profi paste on your peer partner. When a profi paste is selected, the least abrasive paste should be selected for the existing stain and soft deposits you see on your patient's teeth. These abrasives should be applied as wet as possible with a light touch and at a low speed so that we are not abrading too much of a tooth structure on our patients. New profi pastes have been developed which assist in remineralization of the enamel and also to reduce, reduce tooth sensitivity. They contain a component called calcium carbonate and a bicarbonate arginine complex, which helps to bind into those dentinal tubules. It also interrupts the caries process, increases saliva to a more neutral pH, and occludes the dentinal tubules to reduce the sensitivity. An example of this is something called MI paste. Components of the profi paste, we have the abrasive, which cleans and polishes the teeth, a humectant, which keeps the paste from drying out. Water in the paste provides the desired consistency and serves as a solvent for other ingredients in the paste. A detergent facilitates polishing agents in the toothbrush and removing the deposits. And we have a flavoring or coloring that's also added to promote consumer acceptance. And then we have a therapeutic, such as fluoride, to help control dental caries. Here is a look at some um, profi cups that you've probably become very familiar with. Um, they do say their coarseness on the top of a container. This one's coarse, medium, and fine. And the colors that associate with them sometimes correlate to the coarseness of the grit in the paste. It also can um, show in some brands the flavor of the material, but in um, the brand of Nupro, if it's green, it's medium. If it's red, it's coarse. And if it's orange, it is fine. 